Okay, picture this. It's summertime, it's warm outside, we're hanging out, having a barbecue. Suddenly your friend notices something flying around his hamburger and he yells out, I hate bees! And you, being the bug geek that you are, you straighten your glasses and you say, actually, that wasn't a bee. I think you hate wasps. So how do you tell the difference between wasps and bees? It can be kind of tricky. Today, that's what we're gonna talk about. So this is one of the most common questions I get. What's the difference between bees and wasps? And the problem is, those two groups really aren't equal to each other. So you can't really make that comparison. So let me give you an example. And so this example is not exactly the same as the example of bees and wasps, but it works pretty well. Nobody would probably ever ask, what's the difference between a cat and a mammal, right? Because cats obviously are kinds of mammals. And so similarly, if you said cats have fur and they feed their babies milk and they have sharp teeth, that'd be true. But that's also true for a lot of mammals, especially carnivorous mammals. And so you don't really compare cats and mammals. And it's the same thing with bees and wasps. So we need to really rethink the way that we ask this question. So to get a better picture of this, let's look at the phylogeny of bees and wasps. This is like the family tree of this big group of insects that we call bees and wasps. So if you look here on the phylogeny, you see this big group. These are all of the stinging wasps. Uh, if we look closely at what's in this group, we see things like spider wasps, we see paper wasps, cicada killer wasps. Uh, I mean cicada killer wasps, that was weird. Uh, but we also see ants and bees. So what this means is that bees, and ants for that matter, are actually a kind of wasp because they fit in the same family tree of wasps. They are as much a wasp as a spider wasp is a wasp, right? but we call them something different because they have some different characteristics. And so it's interesting, when we think of characteristics of wasps, most people think of skinny waists. They think of them as having not very much hair, maybe long antennae, spiky legs, things like that. A lot of the time people say wasps look mean and bees look cute and nice, right? I can agree with that. Uh, and we think of bees as being furry and having black and yellow stripes. So we have these characteristics in mind, but do they really work for all bees and all wasps? The simple answer is no, they don't. So because bees are just a kind of wasp, they actually share a lot of characteristics that we think of as wasps having. For example, bees do have a skinny waist. They do have long antennae. Some bees are even pretty hairless like other wasps. So how do you tell them apart? Well, there actually is one characteristic that works pretty well to be able to distinguish bees from wasps. Unfortunately, that character is kind of microscopic. So somewhere on a bee's body, they have these special hairs. We call these special hairs plumose hairs. So unlike a normal simple hair, these special bee hairs or these plumose hairs are like branched hairs. It almost looks like a little feather. So if you zoom in on this masked bee here, you can see it looks very wasp-like. It has a waspy kind of shape. It even looks kind of mean like a wasp. There's not even pollen collecting hairs on this bee. In fact, Hylaeus don't have any external pollen collecting hairs. They carry the pollen internally and then they barf it out when they get back to their nest. Kind of cool. Anyway, this Hylaeus looks a lot like a wasp, but if you zoom in right here on the shoulder, you can see it has some of these plumose hairs. And now if we zoom back out, you can see actually there are plumose hairs like this on other parts of the body. So unfortunately though, when this insect is flying around a flower or if there's an insect flying around your hamburger, you can't really see those plumose hairs, right? So that characteristic really isn't that useful in the field. So how do you tell bees and wasps apart? Well, even though physically they can be pretty similar looking, they have a lot of different behaviors. The one I wanna talk about today is their diet. It's interesting because wasps are meat eaters and bees are plant eaters. Wasps are the carnivores of the wasp world, bees are the herbivores of the wasp world. What I mean is wasps feed their babies meat, usually other insects, bees feed their babies pollen from plants. And so that dietary difference has led to the evolution of some different physical features. For example, bees usually have a way to carry pollen and they usually are pretty hairy. That's an adaptation to help them carry this pollen back to their nests. Wasps usually have less hair and usually have long legs with kind of spikes on them. That helps them when they're carrying their prey that they've hunted, when they're carrying that back to their nest. So knowing this difference, we can kind of tell if the insect we're seeing in our yard is a bee or a wasp based on what it's doing. 
Bees, for example, spend a lot more time on flowers because they're gathering pollen and, and spending longer time on the flower head. Wasps will visit flowers because they drink nectar too. It's kind of their energy drink as they are hunting. But they'll spend a little bit of time on the flower head drinking the nectar, and then they're going to be crawling around the flower or flying around the flower looking for their prey, maybe a caterpillar or some other juicy bug to eat. So we can kind of tell the difference based on their behaviors. When people say wasps are mean and bees are nice, that's probably related to these dietary preferences. Wasps are hunters, they are predators, really fun to watch in your yard, but yes, they have a little bit meaner disposition. So we know bees are good for our yard, right? They pollinate our gardens and they pollinate the flowers. What about wasps? Well, wasps are also good for our garden. So as predators, they are good pest control. They like to eat the, the soft-bodied bugs that usually eat our garden, like caterpillars and grasshoppers and things like that. So having wasps around is not a bad thing, and it can be really fun. It's like watching a nature show in your own backyard. Instead of watching a lion hunt a gazelle, you can watch a, a wasp hunt a spider. Super fun. So back to how we started things. We're in our backyard, we're having a barbecue. How do you know that's a wasp around your friend's hamburger? Well, it's because that wasp is looking for meat to feed its babies. In fact, if you let that wasp land on the hamburger, it will actually carve out a little piece of hamburger, fly that back to its nest to feed its babies. Often the wasps we see around our barbecue are either yellow jacket wasps or paper wasps, two kind of social wasps. And they often are seen in large number when you're having a barbecue because they recruit each other to this meal. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, I think I get it. Bees and wasps are different, even though they're related. But what about hornets? I get this question a lot. Hornets are actually just a specialized kind of wasp. Hornets are a social wasp. They're, they're related to the paper wasps. So they, they're the ones that make that paper mache looking bag that kind of hangs from a tree like you see on Winnie the Pooh. So that's what a hornet is. It's just a kind of wasp. In North America, we don't have any true hornets. We have yellow jackets, which are close relatives. But hornets are just a social kind of wasp. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment below and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this.